need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 444 Spirit Way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like we're late. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. <laughs> hi, hi, James. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I'm, good. I'm glad that we both decided on blue today. I know. I was thinking it must be blue today. <laughs> it's today is a blue day. Blue oh day. my gosh! Did you have a good weekend? I did. I did a lot of dog weekend. I had a friend over who had her dog went swimming in my pool and tried to teach Pearl how to swim. And oh. um, yeah, and um, did a lot of gardening and gardening and dogging, and, I, and that's what I did. How great is that, though? It was great. Yeah, it was that's great. great. Yeah. And I started my, my uh, workout program. Which is that? Oh, it's the whole like cardio cardiovascular thing. Ah, I okay, good. Okay. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you off the air. I can't wait to hear about How was it. your week then, Kelly? Well, I did what you were talking about today on soul care. And you said, you know, when we do this work as a medium, yeah. you've got to rest. You do. Yeah. And that's what I did. Good. I rested. I Good. walked the dogs. Good. I did all of that. Um, I spent time in nature, and uh, it was just a lovely, lovely couple of days. It makes a big days. difference, doesn't it? It makes a oh, big, big difference. I love yeah. to get my energy back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't always just give, give, give. You got to get, get, you know, yeah. different. It's so true. A lot of people at the Soul Care Show today want to know about, you know, as you saw that, they're all mediums. Well, you know, I wouldn't even say I'm a medium until I sat for several years in development. Yeah. <laughs> Which is what I did. Actually, yeah. I sat in many years, and I got to sit in a developmental circle with you. Yes, you did. I did. So that was really, I was really lucky. Well, well, hi, <laughs> well, we everybody. Very special guest. Like, hi, everybody. Let's uh, see who's on here. Hi, Charlene. Hi, Holiday. Hi, and Margaret. Holiday, Doreen and Margaret. Fuel the tank back. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> There we go. Hi, Chris. First thing the development circle means and Margaret. Well, it's you're sitting in the quiet, you're sitting to develop your, um, I would say let the spirit world work with you and your instrument, a vessel, the, mm -hmm. and your channeling, your channel, opening up the channels in different energetic ways. It's the simplest way to put it. A lot more to it, but that's really the crux of it, I guess you'd say. Right, Kelly? And, yeah, and I sat in meditation, James, for years and yeah. years and years, you know, building that, building that. You know, I'm doing this meditation course. I just finished the last lesson, recording it two days ago, or Friday, and um it's going to be really, really good. I'm doing promote prom promos tomorrow. I'm taping those and I'm just writing them. And one promo I'm going to do is like a, going to be a big commercial and it's going to be imagine. It's going to be how can you imagine the world if you live from the inside out? And we're going to have oh. a bunch of beautiful visuals based on this company that did this kind of promo movie trailer thing. Okay. And it was really well done. So I'm going to use them. Ooh. See what do, because they charge me. But I'm going to use them. And um, it's so it's going to be so great. It's going to be so great. Fascinating. Great. Okay. Of course, I've been living from the inside out. So, yes. Yeah. Wow. And you're also doing a big meditation Wednesday, right? I'm this doing a Wednesday? global meditation Wednesday. So for everybody, if it's a free meditation on Facebook and it's on um, my page and it'll be like I did last, remember last time? Last yeah. month? Yeah. I sure do. I sure do. <laughs> you were, poor thing. <laughs> I, I was a great meditation man. Bless your I heart. I New York. I don't know where. I, um, and it was, but it was great. But I just let people, I just let the spirit people channel through me and I have different guides sometimes. And, um, yeah, I don't know what the, there's always a theme. I don't know what they're going to choose this this week, but it's Wednesday and uh, it's 5 p.m. Uh, Western time, 8 in Eastern. Well, I'm going to be there. Yeah. I'm excited about it. Wow. Great. The Globe Net. So everybody tell everybody about it, please, because yeah. it's a free connection with everybody coming together as one. So we want to start that. And we have a really <laughs> special gift yeah. guest tonight, don't we? Yeah. Who's right in my neighborhood? I didn't even know this. Which is so exciting, everybody. Now, normally I do, and uh, I start off with Vedic astrology, and it's been quite a week already, just today. But we have a special guest that I'm, we're going to talk about, and we're going to bring him on, and, and we're going to kind of talk a lot about what's actually happened in the news today. Which but, I'm going to know about, so I just got on with Kelly. Right. <laughs> so we have this great guest. His name is Michael Mastro, and Michael is. Um, Let's see. He does. He does Vastu. He's a Vastu practitioner, and he's an award-winning author. He's a Vedic scholar, so you know, as soon as you say Vedic, I'm all in. And he's a teacher, 
and he has had a wildly interesting life. He introduced, he was introduced to meditation in 1968. He was a teacher of transcendental meditation from 1970 to 1973. He has a bachelor's degree in architecture. He was the designer, James, for the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, the Beatles guru. Can you imagine? I didn't know that. Um, may, oh, we're going to find out all kinds of interesting things today. And he has designed spiritual centers around the world using the principles of Vastu. So this is amazing. He also has an honorary master's degree in Vedic science, which is, you know, again, I love Vastu, anything Vedic. Uh, Michael tells Vastu actually is because I don't know what Vastu is. So right. I, he was with Dr. Oz. He's been with the Deepak Chopra. Um, he's presented at the United Nations. So let's introduce our guest, Michael Ma Masters, please. Hi, Hi Michael. Michael. Welcome. Hi. I didn't know you did all that, Michael. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> and and what, what is that? Vashnu. Vashnu? Vastu means building. It's a, it's a Sanskrit word for building, and Shastra means science. It's the science of building. And you can say it's, uh, you know, just to give people a frame of reference, it's Indian feng shui. It's where feng shui came from. And so uh, Vastu is about 10,000 years old, comes from the same part of the Vedas that jo uh, Vedic astrology and Ayurveda come from. They're, they're actually the sister sciences, Vastu, Ayurveda, and, and Jyotish or, or Vedic astrology. And uh, they're all used to make us happier and healthier and more prosperous. And, and if they're used in conjunction. So I, I like to look at people in a holistic way and utilize all these beautiful Vedic sciences that we're so gifted with. Wow. I, it's just, I could listen to this all day long. Your background is just right? Wow. And you worked with the Beatles guru. Um, yes, that's where actually I first learned about Vastu. I was a young architect. I didn't know much of, about, about Vedic sciences. And uh, I was walking down the street in San Francisco and someone said someone was giving a lecture and it was Maharishi. And I talked to him afterwards and he mentioned that it would be great if I came to India and helped him design some things. And I didn't come right away, but came shortly after that. And that's where I learned about Vastu at his feet and then also uh, astrology. I didn't learn astrology from him, but it's part of Vastu uh, to know Vedic astrology. Because when you design a building, you need to know the astrology of the family that you're designing the building for. So, wow. uh, And tell us why that's important. Yes, yeah, so, so these three uh, sciences are so interconnected that you could look at someone's floor plan of their apartment or their house and you can actually tell, you know, what's going on with their health, what's going on with their finances and their career. And their, their Vedic astrology chart lines up with the floor plan of their house. They're so interconnected. So... Uh, improving you know strengthening weak planets in in a chart will help strengthen the energy flow in your apartment and vice vice versa if you use the the vastu remedies in your apartment that will help with your karma your your vedic astrology vedic astrology is just um jyotish means light and so what it is is it's a path of light to to bring you to enlightenment to bring you to good health and happiness. And the ancient seers cognized these uh, beautiful uh, lessons from astrology to help us, um, guide us on our way so that we can be uh, like you, James, be a channel for an instrument for the divine to flow through us. And uh, just, I could tell, I, I was very interested in your chart. I didn't know much about you, but it, it's very interesting when you look at your chart, you can see that your eighth house is ruled by moon and moon is uh, the planet that gave you all these great clairvoyant abilities and, and psychic healing abilities. Eighth house has to do with transformation. Right. And you, your moon is in your first house, which is your life purpose. So your life purpose is to help people heal and connect them with, with the people that have passed and the things that they didn't get to say before they were gone. And, 
heal that relationship that's so clear in your chart. You're, wow. you're very gifted. We're all gifted. We all have these gifts that. So, so Vedic astrology is just a little bit different than Western astrology. Are the houses different as well? So, so the difference is in Western astrology is where the planets were 2000 years ago. If you were to ask an astronomer where the planets were when you were actually born, that's called the sidereal zodiac. Uh, oh. Western is the, the tropical zodiac and, and the Vedic zodiac is the sidereal zodiac, where the planets were, were actually when you were born. So it's actually the true placement of planets in your chart. Um, you know, I've done uh, both and just found quicker, more lasting results with uh, with Jyotish and much more accurate and being able to predict it because in Western astrology, you're looking mostly at the sun sign, which changes every 30 days. In Vedic astrology, we focus on the rising sign. When you looked at the Eastern horizon when you were born, what what constellation was rising and, and the the uh, sign that was associated with that constellation. So that changes every two and a half hours. So wow. much more accurate basically than um, wow, 30 than days. <laughs> Western astrology. Wow. And you teach it also on your website, yeah. you have a class on it. Yes. I love, I love all these Vedic sciences and it's, it's my service to be able to help people to understand them. And, and I'm learning too. I'm also in this big school learning all new things every day because it's such a fascinating, vast science, you know, Boston. Oh, and absolutely. And I anybody who wants to learn Vedic astrology, please go to his website. Go to Michael's website. Love that. Everybody, everybody asks me all the time. And Michael, because I'm ignorant, what's your Western sign, your sun sign? Uh, Libra. Libra, okay, okay. I think you're gonna say Sag, but yeah. <laughs> my rising sign is Virgo. Oh, it is. There's a science too. Okay, in yeah, detail. Yeah. And what's your moon in the Western? Moon is also uh, Virgo. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Wow. I'm a I'm a zero degree Virgo Western, so okay. And I I can see, and I, but I see I'm in the cusp of Leo Virgo. I definitely do both. Well, in Vedic, you're you're Leo. And Vedic, I'm Leo. Yeah, I can't get away from all that Leo. I have four yeah. planets in Leo in the Western. <laughs> but you're also are so good at you can get out in the public. Yeah, that uh, does it. That Leo does it because otherwise, huh? forget it. Yeah, otherwise I'm into it. Yeah. And Sorry. I thought today was an especially interesting day with the news that so, I thought we could yeah, talk about. You and Michael. Well, I thought it was really fascinating today because we found out that Tucker Carlson got fired along with Don Lemon. So Don Lemon of CNN. All days so today. Awesome. Yeah. So do you want to talk a little bit about that? So we came to the same place with this. Sure. Um, in, in Vedic astrology, using Sidereal Zodiac, if you looked at the Eastern horizon, cancer was rising when he was born. So he his, his rising sign is cancer. And uh, so he uh, uh, his eighth house is... Uh, uh, so sun and, and Rahu. Rahu is a planetary node of the moon. It's where the intersection of the, you know, the earth and the, and the uh, sun are, or, uh, and the moon. And so uh, very interesting. Just today, the, uh, uh, his, Rahu was afflicting his son in his career house, huh. right, right on top of each other. And then his natal Saturn, which is, uh, ruling his eighth house of endings and and death-like experiences, <laughs> transformation uh, was afflicting the sun and Rahu as well today, and then Jupiter, uh, which is also it's ruling his sixth house, which has to do with workplace and and conflict and and also uh, it can be divorce. <laughs> so that was afflicting his career house as well today. So all those things were happening today. Wow. Yeah. It's a powerful life. day. Yeah, very powerful day. And I mean, he'll go on to do great, great things, but uh, yeah. not with Fox News right now. <laughs> and Don Lemon from CNN. Did you look up his chart at all? We, did yeah, not. we didn't have a chance we to do that. But Pisces, I know that. I know his son is in place. Well, he was born on March 1st. I looked that up, 1966. Mm -hmm. So March 1st, if I go by a different system, which is called the Destiny Cards, he's a nine right. of spades, the end. <laughs> That's what it means. Nine of spades is, it's over. Uh, the end. It actually is the death card. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and Michael, 
for your work, so I'm, and forgive me for my ignorance here. Do you work with corporations, with uh, every, everyday people at their houses, or do you what? What do you? All of it. In fact, when I came back from India, I got uh, the opportunity, great opportunity, to design the first Microsoft building. So I work with Microsoft, Intel, Amazon, Nordstrom. <laughs> Uh, you know, just helping with the energy flow in their buildings and, and got to design some buildings for Boeing as well. You and what's the difference Vastu. between Feng Shui and what you do at Bush New? What is the difference? So, so Vastu is based Vastu. totally on the directions. Each direction, like Northeast, is associated with water and growth in your life, prosperity. Southeast is associated with fire and, and your health. Southwest is associated with the earth and your support, your career. And Northwest is associated with the air element and and your relationships. And the center is the space element. So so Vastu is totally based on the directions. And most schools of feng shui are based on how you enter the house. They create this bagua, and the right hand corner from the entrance would be uh, relationships. Left hand co corner is prosperity. Um, I've worked with both and I just, again, found quicker, more lasting results with Vastu. But um, they both deal with keeping energy moving. Everything's made of energy. Everything has a frequency. The earth has a frequency. And that's what I, I, I saw in your bio, James, that you turn in to these higher frequencies to help connect past loved ones with the well, it's here. funny you say that because my where I live in this house and I created these beautiful gardens here. And to me, it's all about movement uh, and energy and moving all the time. Movement, movement. Even when I walk the garden, it's it's movement and I feel movement and I just, you know, I feel energy move everywhere. And and, and the more I walk in the garden, I mean, the more I feel the energy of the earth and the, the plants and the flowers and the connection. Because so, life yeah. is movement, right? Life is movement. I think, yeah, it's so important for all of us to ground ourselves, to work in the garden, to go for walks in nature. And True. especially during these big transformational planetary times that we're in, uh, so, so important to connect with the earth. And so in Vastu, basically what we're doing is identifying where energy is getting stuck. And depending on where it's getting stuck, you can see, you can look at someone's floor plan. Like my wife does this all the time on the plane. She'll ask somebody she's sitting next to which i would never do to uh you know she starts talking to them and they complain about some aspect in their life and she has them draw a little sketch of their floor plan on a on a napkin and she can see exactly what's going on in their life and and uh just like we can see it in astrology the the, the astrology chart is very much connected to where you live what your floor plan looks like and when you go into a different planetary period, you will often move on to a different apartment or house. It's, it's very interesting how they're all very much connected. Well, then how does remodeling work with that? Yeah, so remodeling is, is a lot of times where I get new clients because they've been doing really well financially and health-wise, and then they do something that changes that something in the house, and all of a sudden they're having health issues, they lost their job, or, they lost their money in the stock market and it's because they changed something in the house but in yeah in boston we're just identifying where the energy is getting stuck if it's getting stuck in the northeast then it'll affect the prosperity etc and, and we just find ways energetic ways to get that energy to move again and it's all about frequency and energy so we use these little energy machines it's called a yantra to uh, move any energy that's stuck and uh, that's without any remodeling. They don't have to change anything. Okay. Wow. Are there any days that are better than other days when you do when you're working with Fatsu? Is there any special yeah, days? It's always nice to to look at you know where the moon is and if it's growing and and you know what where the planets are. But uh, you know you, you got to do what you got to do every day. But right. yes, I you know I help people pick an auspicious day to to uh, buy a house and, and make a decision, an important decision in their life, sign a contract. And so, yes, if you can pick what we call a maherto, uh, an auspicious timing, then it makes so much difference. Things are so much easier. Like if you break out ground on a house that's on a, a not such a good planetary day, uh, then 
there can be problems with permitting and inspect inspections and things take much longer. So yeah, it's always good to have the planet. Let, let me ask you this then, you know, we just went, Mercury's now in retrograde. What yes. do you think about energies during that period of time? So, you know, the, uh, you know, everybody recommends not signing contracts, being <laughs> careful with your communications during Mercury retrograde. But in Vedic astrology, we're looking really about what, what, what uh, house Mercury rules. And, and so if it's not uh, in a poor, you know, if it's not weak in your chart, if it's not ruling a challenging house like the 6th, 8th, or the 12th house, then the Mercury retrograde isn't having that big of an effect on you. Um, retrograde just means it stays someplace longer. So if it's in the transit chart, it's in a challenging house and it's staying there longer because it's in retrograde, then yes, then you, you're going to have more challenges with communications of all kinds, contracts. You know, um, you, you say some to, something to someone, it seems clear to you, but they totally misunderstand it and it gets you into trouble. So, yeah, it's always good though during a retrograde to be just a little bit more cautious with your. And, and I have a question, Mike, because um, yes. um, my lovely Kelly, every week she starts the astrology, like what's going on happening. Can I ask you, what do you see coming coming to us? Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, there was a big shift in, in January where, where uh, Saturn uh, uh, changed. And, and this is really something, I think, very good for the planet. We have to look at each chart, uh, each person's chart to see how it affects them. And now we have Jupiter uh, entering Aries, which it's just two uh, days ago. Yeah, yeah just two days ago, and it's going to be conjunct with Rahu uh, pretty soon. I mean, it's 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 in that orb right now, and for a lot of astrologers are you know saying you know the economy is going to go bad and all these things, but I don't see it that way. I'm more of an optimist. I, I'm Rahu gives you desire, so. And Jupiter is all about optimism and opportunities for growth and spiritual growth. So I see it as mostly uh, opportunity to have more spiritual growth in your life. Um, and then there's, you know, there are some charts, some people will experience some uh, confusion because Rahu does give you unexpected type of events. And <laughs> it's malefic, it causes problems. Yes, it causes hope. But the ultimate result, all these planets are teaching us to grow and evolve. I mean, we're in a big Absolutely. Spirit. So, so yeah, it may feel a little uncomfortable, but it's always going to be for the better in the long run. So we have to see that as little snippets of time where the planets are pushing us to grow a little bit and and evolve. And it's so great, James, that uh, you teach people how to be a medium or, or open themselves up to allow the divine to throw flow through them because the planet needs way more healers right now. It's a lot more light. The healers we have, the better. Yeah, it's very true. And, and as far as the, uh, the U.S. or the, well, the international situation with Russia and Ukraine, anything with that or any other wars or? Yeah, I don't see it getting out of hand. I'm, I'm hoping, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a shift in November where Rahu and K2 change signs. And I, I'm hoping that there's some agreement that can come there. We see a little possibility of more talks in, in the next couple of months, but I don't think it will last. And I'm hoping uh, in November that they'll come to some agreement and, and we'll, we'll get past this period. Um, it's it's quite way, like, as, I, as, I, as you're saying this, I'm hearing in my head, there's going to be a death of a political leader within this year. Ah, interesting. Isn't that interesting, Kelly? That's probably our yeah. friend, Belinda. But yeah, I just heard probably. that. Probably. That a figurehead, a political figurehead, is in the action now. There'll be a death of a, that. I heard. Can you say more about that? Is it in the U.S. or? I, I you know, I just get it just dropped in. There'll be a political leader. They not telling me who. A okay. Political leader of now. Okay. Well, well okay. it could be in the United States because of Saturn right now. It could be. Right. It, could be Sati. Sati. It, it could. could. Be it could be. My goodness. And mm -hmm. Kelly, what about our good friend? What's her name? The water. The Kadanka. Kadanka. Oh, Kadanka. Kadanka. <laughs> You always say, <laughs> you have to make me laugh, James. Yeah, Gandanta. Gandanta. No, you know, it's Gandanta. We're still in Gandanta right now for another 
day or two. I think tomorrow is the last day of Gandanta, actually, yeah, James. When it shifts from a water sign yeah. to a fire sign, it, yeah. it kind of shakes things up a little bit. You create yeah. fire and water together, they create steam. So That's steam right, is yeah. a little bit of confusion and a little bit of unsettled feelings. And it's only temporary and uh, not a huge, huge thing. Yeah. We all experience a little steam from now time to time. <laughs> it's interesting all right renee would you put that pick that phone? here we go marge webb says does having a window everywhere help the flow of energy good question it's where you have the windows so uh all the positive solar and magnetic energy come in through the northeast part of your apartment or house and then that energy splits and it flows around and settles in the southwest area of your home to benefit people living there or working there if it's an office. And if you have lots of windows and doors in that area, some of that energy leaks out, becomes unwanted expenses. It leaks out some healing energy as well. So definitely more light, you know, more prana. Uh, prana is life force energy. And we know, you know, you're out in nature at a waterfall, the prana is very high. If you go into a subway, crowded subway station underground, there's not much prana. We know how that feels. And so, yes, windows are great. And we never block a window or anything like that. But we do, we set up these little energy barriers where, uh, where we can slow down the, the leaks of expenses that we don't want. Uh, uh, and, and increase the, the energy flow in, in your house. So you feel uplifted in your house. Some people feel uh, very stuck in their house. They love their house, but they just, uh, they feel better when they travel and when they come back, then they feel stuck again. So we're just getting this energy that's stuck to start moving again. So their, their prosperity is thriving, their health is thriving and they, they're har more harmony in their relationships and, and advancement in their career. What is, here's a good question. Haley Bell, is it okay to have a cluttered loft or would the energy there still affect cl clearness of the house? That's a good question because, uh, Michael, as, as you know, Kelly knows, we get a lot of clients who are, could be hoarders or the spirit will come through and say, you have to clean out that room. What is your take on that? Yeah, wherever, take you, where, out there. wherever you have clutter, whether it's in the basement or, or in your attic or in, in different parts of your house, energy gets stuck so if you have clutter in the northeast it's going to affect your prosperity if you have it in this southeast it's going to affect your health and knowing this is is a great thing because you oh it's just that closet i can take everything out and make three piles one to give away one to throw away one to save and put it back in an organized way and then you feel so much energy when you remove that clutter it makes such a huge difference it's so true yeah. Here's a good question. This is from Nadine von Vorren. I'm saying her name right. Hi, Nadine. She said, I hear in Vastu, it has a meaning how one sleeps. The head to the north indicates negative energy. Head to the south creates harmony. East means spiritual advancement. She says, is this right? I would love to know what it means for the West. Part of, part of Vastu is just aligning yourself with the forces of nature, building in harmony with nature. And Yes, the direction you sleep has a great deal to do with how refreshed you wake up when you uh, when you sleep, and 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 it's all about um, positive magnetic energy comes from the north, and our body is a magnet. The positive polarity is in our head. So if we're sleeping with our head in a north, northeast, or northwest direction, it's like bringing two positive ends of magnets together. They repel. It disturbs the blood flow, the circulation, the digestion, and over time, you're you're gonna you're not throwing off the stress that you need to. I, I was involved in a study in a hospital where they took 50 patients recovering from similar surgery. 25 had their headboards on the north wall, 25 on the south wall, and what they found was they were all hooked up to EEG machines to measure the, the brain waves, etc. They found that the patients with their headboards to the south recovered more quickly with less complications. They were having more REM states and longer REM states than the patients with their headboards to the north. In fact, they bury people in some cultures with their head to the north because the body will decompose more quickly. And we don't want that to happen while we're <laughs> alive. So, so what would be the ideal uh, placement, east to west? Yeah, west? yeah. So any direction but north, northeast or northwest. Okay. South is particularly good because it completes that magnetic cycle. 
especially if you have some health issues. West is fine, East is good. East is really good for kids because it helps them grow mentally, spiritually, physically. Up until the time where maybe they're 12 years old, then maybe South is a little bit better because it helps you throw off stress. You have more stress as you as you age. Yeah, so, I, I sleep East to West. My head is the East going West. That's fine. And, and you sleep well? I sleep well. Excellent. So, no problem. And it's just so funny because all my, my, like my garden, it's funny. I have little seating areas. And before I even got here, I created these, but I mean, I created them as I got here, but they all face West. They all face the sunset. Interesting. Isn't that interesting? Yes. So, I mean, there's been lots of studies with Vastu about the direction you face when you work, when you, when you play music, when you do art, when you meditate. And these, uh, like I've been involved in some studies where they have a hundred kids, similar IQ, study the same materials, take the same test, and they have them face different directions, 25 face north, 25 face south, east and west. And again, what they find is the kids that face north and east do about 20% better than the test. They have better focus, um, better concentration. The kids that face east, their creativity, the right brain is ignited by that solar energy from the sun. The wow. kids that face north, their left brain is ignited by the magnetic energy. So that's the math part of the test, the, the analytical part of the test. Yeah. And the kids that face south or west just don't have the same stamina or focus. Um, wow. So, it, it, so if, if somebody had a child that was ADHD, yes. this would really be important. Absolutely. One of many, many things. Uh, there's so many, I have so many patients with the uh, ki kids who have autism or AD, mm -hmm. ADD. It's, it's very common these days. Gosh, that opens up a whole discussion here for yeah, healing yeah. for people. So there's, you know, there's so many more things in Vastu that we can do besides the direction you face and the direction you sleep to support, um, you know, healing uh, ADHD, etc. Or even on the spectrum or any of that. That's yes. fascinating. Yes. yes. And yeah. Ayurveda has a lot of herbs that help as well, too. Yeah. For, yeah. For, That's uh, true. Kids. Uh, Lisa Zapp asks, in Australia, are the directions opposite, such as north is south? Good question, Lisa. Yeah, the water goes different down the right. different way in the toilet and all that. But in Vastu... Uh, there is some disagreement about this, but my my 40 years uh, have taught me that the sun is always rising in the east. A little bit different whether you're in the southern or the norm, northern hemisphere and in the different uh, months of the year, it's rising in a little different spot, but mostly in the east. And magnetic energy, no matter where you are on the planet, comes from the north, the north pole. So the, the principles of Vastu are the same, whether you're in uh, Australia or U.S. Wow. Uh, wow. Sonia Contreras says, oh, my God, in my household, we got solar panels. And she said, and that is the only major renovation we did before my husband got sick and lost his job. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I have solar panels, too. It's where you put them that make the difference. Um, but they, they, produ they produce a lot of electromagnetic frequencies. So uh, this is a big thing that I deal with in Vastu, um, you know, earth energies, underground streams, channels, and modern times we have 5G. So we've developed, uh, my wife and I have developed some ways to protect ourselves, to transform these electromagnetic frequencies. People that, like you, James, uh, that are very sensitive um, really feel these EMFs yeah. more than others yeah. and it affects, you know, their sleep, their immune system. Yeah. You know, we see where 5G started was in, you know, the, uh, in China there. And that's that's where the the virus started, the coronavirus. So they're very, very much connected. So whatever we can do to protect ourselves from these EMFs, well, we have something that uh, a USB that will plug into any outlet in, in your house and transform all the wiring to protect you from 5G. Then we have a pendant that we wear uh, that contains this paramagnetic material that transforms the EMFs into um, from an incoherent wave to coherent wave so that it supports us instead of uh, lowering our pranic energies. It's funny, Michael, my, my teacher, Brian Hurst, who taught me what 30 years ago, whatever, 
40 years ago. And he's very much into exactly what you're talking about, the EMFs and, and fighting them off and changing them around. And wow. he speaks exactly the same language. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, and these, these pendants that I'm talking about, they also uh, uh, support uh, strengthening weak planets in your chart. So just like you have stuck energy in your house, you have some, everybody has some planets that need strengthening and it's affecting their health, their finances, their career and relationships. So we place in these pendants, not only the paramagnetic material, but also the Devata Yantras for those particular planets that will strengthen them. Um, so it's kind of a combination thing, uh, a remedy for planetary energies that can be challenging for people. Do you do house calls? Well, he's close to you, James. I know. I just think well, you're so lucky. Love to come over, James. Anytime. Oh, you should go see his gardens, you his should. home. I, it's I'd really spectacular. Love, love the garden. Love Anytime you're. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd like to get to see your field because I have a garden or gardens that um, people either love them or repels them. Interesting. They can't, they can't yeah, there's a whole science of Vastu for gardens, too. To, you know, where you place the fountain and where you place. Oh, I can't wait because that's so funny to say that, Michael. People have come who are aware in certain wisdom, ancient wisdoms, and they say you pick the perfect place for that water fountain. I'm like, I just used my intuition. They said, no, that's no, good. No, yeah, you channeled it. So. You're it's a like natural dowser. <laughs> that's, that's right, natural dowser. That's exactly yeah. it. Dowsing is a part of us too, too. To, is to, it? To find these energies, that uh, earth energies that may be affecting you and your, your family and and diverting or blocking those energies uh, is done through dowsing. Wow. And Mark Webb asked, uh, Mar Marge Webb, uh, would you, any particular crystals help with EMS? You know, uh, shungite is, uh, is what a lot of people use. I use this paramagnetic material that, that's even way more effective than shungite. But yeah, the shungite is the, the thing that a lot of people use um, to protect themselves from EMS. So if somebody were going to have a session with you, that would be what it would be called. That they'd have a session with you and you would yes. do their chart and then they would tell you what was going on in their life kind of, or. Yeah. Well, we, um, you know, since COVID I traveled extensively before COVID and my, my wife was not very happy about it. I was gone <laughs> on the East coast a lot or in South America or Europe, but these days, and I was doing it back then. I can't go everywhere. People would send me a, uh, a little floor plan or a sketch of their apartment or house from Mongolia and you know I didn't go there so uh, and from that I do an analysis I figure out where the energy is getting stuck and how it's affecting their love life or their uh, health and um, I send them these little energy machines and with instruction on how to place them or some people I do FaceTime and walk around the house with them and help them place these little energy machines to get that stuck energy to start moving again so it can all be done online, or if you're in, in the area, uh, uh, I, I, I do do house visits as well. Okay, I'll get that set up. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Oh, here's a good question. This is from Ann Margaret. She says, where is the best placement for a bed for a new love relationship? Oh, that's a good one. Well, it's the same. You don't want, you want to have good long REM states and more of them you want to sleep deeply and so that you're not stressed out and and having stress stress in your relationship so and, you know any direction but north northeast or north uh, west uh, will be fine to support but there's many many things we can do for romance uh in the bedroom you know even if you go to the website they give you nine tips if you sign up with your email but there's some things like putting rose quartz in the four corners of uh, your bed between your box springs and, and your mattress. This can uh, bring more harmony in your relationship. There's many, many things we can do with colors and things like that that support more romance in the relationship. Wow. Um, oh, here, and Margaret also has this. Does the earthing mat protect us in a Vatsu way? So I use some earthing mat. Are you familiar with the earthing yes, products? And yes. yes. Um, I tried them. I didn't experience that much from them. I, I like to walk barefoot in the grass each morning to kind of ground. Um, uh, but a lot of people do swear by them. So, yeah, whatever works for you to, to ground your energy is good. I mean, we actually had the earthing sheets for a while. 
Um, <laughs> yes, I had them. <laughs> yes. I sleep yeah, on them, yeah. And it works for you. Okay, that's good. That's good. I lie down in the grass every day. That's, that's oh, even better. You're With lucky, James. You're yeah, lucky. Like, Pearl, move me. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah DeVoe. Hi, Sarah. She says, any tips for how to get through these solar flares we are going through? Yes, this you know we we live on this earth and we have stress coming from water pollution, air pollution, solar flares for fire pollution, and then space pollution. We have the EMFs, and uh, you know so whatever we can do to protect ourselves. Um, the solar flares is a, is more of a challenging one, but if the vastu in the house is ener the energy flowing in in your house and not getting stuck you will be more protected from the solar flares getting it. Yeah, so that, that, that's helpful. But yeah, they do create some challenges for sure. Yeah. Joe Sunderledge, is there a counteraction you can take if the only wall in your bedroom that fits your bed means the headboard is north? Good question, Joe. Yes, I have lots of houses that I go to, and this is the case. They can't put the bed anywhere else. So I do suggest something a little strange. I ask them for two weeks to throw their pillow on the other end of the bed and try it. And most people find that they sleep more deeply and wake up more refreshed. It takes a couple of days to get used to. But yeah, that's a simple solution. Wow. Now, a simple solution. I never would have thought we, that. We can do some things with Vastu also to ground the energy and not change your sleeping position that helps as well. Uh, Haley Bells, to work out the directions, are we looking from the front and back of the house or literally on a compass? So you don't, you know, most people have a compass on their phone and it, it, it's not totally accurate. The most accurate thing, is the simplest thing is to Google your address and press the satellite button. And the top of your computer is always going to be true north. The right side is true east, the left side is west, and the bottom of your computer is south. So it's very easy to see the directions of your house or your apartment house from Google uh, Google Maps. Yeah, very true. That's yeah. fascinating. Uh, Smith Ashley, interesting. I work in a children's hospital, and the hospital beds on the right are faced one way versus the other. The beds face south are so sick in the ICU. The beds face south that are... Uh, south is, uh, oh, if the headboard's on the to the south, that's a good thing. Okay. Um, it's you know uh, it's the best for healing if you can have the headboards to the south. I, I think she meant north to south. The headboards north north in the bed. Oh, the okay. So what can they do? Yeah. So there are some you know again like James, you tune into these higher frequencies. We can utilize. There's a really great quote from Einstein. It's like, everything is made of energy. If you match the frequency of what you want, then you will only get that result. And so the higher frequencies of love and, um, uh, you know, compassion, in natural order. It, and that's what we're using with these little energy machines. We're, we're taking the highest possible frequency uh, where everything is in harmony and in harmony with nature uh, to to move that stuck energy. And so that that's what could be done, you know, in for Vastu. And I've done Vastu for hospitals as well. So there are things that can be done as well to improve the healing process for people. That's oh, why I on Dr. Oz. In fact, um, yeah. a few years ago, I uh, uh, was working with Dr. Kulri Chowdhury, who is a neurologist in this area. I love her. I think she's amazing. Oh, you know her then? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think her work is amazing. She's amazing. And she has a lot of amazing psychic abilities, too. Intuitively, she can tell what's going on with people. But she had about 30 patients that were uh, had, had healed to a certain point, and then they weren't going any farther. So we introduced Vastu and... Vedic astrology remedies and you know the healing process took off for these people. So we got to to present that on Dr. Oz. It was a lot of fun. Wow. 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 How did he go with that? Was that no, he's open to a lot of things. And and he had uh Kulri uh Chaudhary on there uh several episodes talking about Ayurveda and he didn't know about Vastu, but once he learned about it, he was very open to 
um, you know, the sister science and how they could work together to help people with their healing process. Wow. Uh, Don DeGroote, are past lives and karma affected by our homes? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I your chart is your karma. Mm -hmm. And you can tell uh, from your chart the type of floor plan that you're going to uh, gravitate towards. So let's say, um, you know, moon is very weak in your chart or it's afflicted or it's poorly placed. And the moon is associated with the Northwest direction. All the planets are uh, associated with a specific direction. And so, you know, I see the chart of someone and then I look at the floor plan of their apartment and they're missing corners in the Northwest. And North moon is mind and emotions and a relationship. So they're Maybe, maybe not having a relationship or looking for a relationship or there's a lot of stress in their relationship. So we, again, move that stuck energy, you know, eliminate that missing corner and uh, their chart improves in there and their life improves and the, the energy flow in their house improves because they're so interconnected, the astrology and the, and the Vastu. This is fascinating. Jan Peterson Callahan, my daughter who has sarcoma cancer came home to stay with us. Her bed is easy to the West. Should we change it? Um, it depends on how she's doing. If you have the possibility of South, it could be a little bit better. Um, but uh, there's nothing terribly wrong with East to West. East is a little bit better than West too. So if that's a possibility. Uh, jo let me see. Joni Dwayne Joni. Gibson. Hi, Joni. I've always wondered why when I'm, when I'm, I'll go lay in my bed, which is face south, I always feel much better once I rest a short time. That's interesting. So that's, that completes the magnetic cycle. When you're, when you're, when your headboard is on a south wall, it's like, it's just, it's completing the natural cycle of, of, and what we're doing in, in um, sleep is we are, uh, with these REM cycles, the deeper, longer lasting REM cycles, is throwing off stress. And so you, you can feel very much more rested if you're sleeping in, in harmony with nature, basically, and not with your headboard to the north. What if you sleep outside? How's that? Because I was thinking of your floating, your floating bed, James. Wait till you see his house. <laughs> he has a floating bed outside that's nice. extraordinary. It was from a, a yoga center in Costa Rica I went to, and there was at a floating bed next to his pool. And I said, I would love to have one of these. So I, I put one on my built one on my property. Yeah. So it's, it's facing, but it's facing east west. Oh, it nice. has that be east. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. And. Yeah, I, um, you know, there are some people that like to have their bed right on the floor. Um, in Vastu, we like to have some gap. So having air under your bed is good. Um, so you're not being affected by earth energies like fault lines. And, you know, if you're in a house, there's pipes and wires underneath you. You want some gap between even with your headboard, you don't want it right against the wall. You want to leave a couple, three inches so that you're not picking up all those electromagnetic frequencies from, from the pipes and the wiring in the walls and things like that. Michael, I have a question for you, which is kind of a weird, strange question, but I know you've been asked this before. In an apartment building, right, with several apartments, let's think yes. of New York City, for instance. Yes. Manhattan, what happens then when you have a big building? And you're stuck in an apartment, let's say, in the, you know, the ninth floor and it's a 17 story. What happens in that respect? I mean, does that have an effect the overall or the small apartment or how does that work? Well, Vastu is from the microcosm to the macrocosm. There, okay. uh, there's Vastu of a country. There's yeah. a Vastu of the planet. There's a Vastu of a city. There's the Vastu of your apartment. In and a big, and there's the Vastu of the whole apartment house. We don't have control over the whole apartment house, but we do have control of what we do in our apartment. So, you know, doing uh, adding the remedies to your apartment will make a huge difference, whether, regardless of the, the Vastu of the whole building. And the Vastu of the United States. <laughs> so, that? Vastu has a lot to do with shape. And, uh, if uh, the United States is fairly rectangular, 
whereas some other countries are more triangular, like India didn't used to be in the very, you know, way That's thousands right. of years ago, it was a totally different shape and, and sure. you know, everything was different back then. But the Vastu is fairly uh, rectangular of the United States and that gives very much creativity here. But there's also some conflict as well. And, you know, we have our own problems, but very good creativity with uh, a rectangular shape. But, but the East Coast means that's something different than the West Coast or North to the South or? Yeah, the energy is different on the West Coast, much more laid back, much more intense on the East Coast, you know, you, and it has to do with the placement of the water, where the water is. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, the mountains, and you know, the, you know, different areas of the country have mountains in one direction that may be blocking uh, this positive solar magnetic energy that can make a difference too. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, Callie Healer, is there a best direction that your house should face? Well, um, you know, uh, half of the houses in the planet face south or west, but if you can choose a house that faces east or north, you get a little bit more of that positive magnetic from the north and the positive solar energy from the east. But it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with a house that faces south or west. It just may need a couple more corrections or remedies. I love that. Um, AA Singletary, I live on the 10th floor. My headboard is on the west wall. I will be having a double lung transplant oh, wow. later this year. Should I rearrange my bedroom? If if your bed can uh, headboard can be on the south wall uh, easily, then that yeah, I would go for that. But if you can't, there's many other things that we can do to support your healing process. Uh, I wish you the best of luck for that. Bed. And Lagita here, Lagita Kravik says, once I moved our bed that the headboard faced south. I got pregnant that I tried for many years unsuccessfully. Isn't that interesting? Wow. That's amazing. Less, <laughs> the, the biggest problem, I have so many clients that come to me, they're not able to get pregnant. And right. it's, yeah, whatever we can do to reduce the stress in the house. Now we can see, you know, the in the Vastu of the house, it's usually a combination of some, what we call dosha or imbalance in the Northeast and in the Southeast. Southeast is your, the pranic energy flow, whether your energy is low or, uh, or, or your energy is stuck, and the northeast is that growth. And so you need the, the, the growth for the baby to grow. So it's a combination of those two things. And so when we do the corrections for the northeast and the southeast, many people that were having trouble for years are able to get pregnant. Wow. I have clients to send to you then. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, hands you can in see mode. It in your chart as well. You can That's see amazing um, whatever uh um planet rules the fifth house of children and then Jupiter is also an indicator for children. If they're mm -hmm. weak or a debilitator or afflicted, we can provide remedies that will help them. Um uh, Tanzan Mo, will the body chakras and meridians get impacted by these directions? Oh, absolutely. So it has, it has uh, influence. Your house is a living, breathing entity. It's, it's made of the same earth, water, fire, air, and space, the five elements that you're made of. And so, and there is a, a, there are chakras from the southwest corner of your house to the northeast corner of your house. All the chakras of the house, because it's an entity, and, and there's a soul of the house. And, and uh, James, I bet you're able to. To connect. I know exactly where the soul of my house is. <laughs> the house is unbelievable. Just I'm unbelievable. Sure. The energy you know, the is unbelievable. Is, I feel the soul of my house, and it's really interesting because it's in the center. And when I moved here, there was a mandala that the owners before, I guess, had put in right in the center of the house, right in the soul of that house. Beautiful, beautiful. So, well, tell them also what was when you moved in, which I thought was fascinating, in the movie room. Oh, this is very interesting. So Just, I asked the spirit world for a sign that this was my house or so to move into. And... I, I asked for a sign. So I saw the, out, the outside. I thought, okay, it has potential for garden, a garden here. So I could do that. I get that. But can I please see a sign, like a better sign? So mm -hmm. I went up the stairs to where I am right now in this room, which was a master bedroom. And I looked out the window. And as I looked out the window, there was a five freeway, you know. And, you know, because, you know, the area of San Diego Lagoon, the lagoon was over there. Yes. And that's the exact place in 1982 when I dro drove to San Diego for the first time. 
when there were no houses down here, there was mostly all green. I yeah. said, I want to live here one day. And I actually looked out my window and there was this exact site I said that. And then I said, thank you, Spirit. That's really good. I love that. Can I have just another sign, please? <laughs> so I walked into this other room that real estate agents showed me, and it was a movie room that the person made. It was like, wow, this is incredible. Hanging on the wall was a movie poster because the guy collected movie posters, and it was lit up The Sixth Sense. And I oh, said, wow. That's a good it's a movie that was based on his life. Yeah. Well, not, not, well, some of it, yeah, I would say that. I, I, I can say that. That's true, but I can't say that. Yes. We had the same agent, and Mike Shakur, the guy that wrote that, myself. And um, he, he saw my book talking to heaven, and they wanted to make a movie of that, but it couldn't be violent or you know scary. So they, right, right. I don't know if that's a, you know officially say it that way, but pretty close. It's that's it's a, a good that's sign, Jim. No, it's an interesting one. Jody W., if your house faces north, but you have a large tree in the front yard, does that interrupt the good energy or does the tree amplify it? It it does block some energy, but I would never tell somebody to take a healthy tree down. There are There's a remedy for it, and so they can just contact me and we can help with that. But it does block a little bit of energy. And the, and and we can we can provide a remedy without taking that tree down. Great. So many people are just loving this. Really. Thank you. Really, Michael. So many people are loving this. Josephine Raspatini. This was very interesting and informative. And we have people. Joe Sunderledge said she signed up to get the Vatsu Shastra book to learn more. She said, I don't know what a yantra is. And I'm curious to learn more about all of this. Yeah, yantra is just a, a visual representation of a mantra or sound. It's it's a vibration basically, and we use those to like like you you go to an acupuncturist or someone who knows how energy flows in your body, and they can tell by whatever ailment you're you're having where energy is getting blocked, what meridian, and they place a, a needle there to open up that that blocked meridian. Uh, marma points is what's called in Ayurveda. And so a house has these marma points or, or meridian points uh, where energy gets blocked. And we utilize these yantras to get that stuck energy to start flowing again, just like in your body. So you feel more uplifted in your house. Wow. This more is just support. great. Uh, Lynn, thank you, Michael, for a very enlightening talk. Wow. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Really incredible. I'll, I'll be seeing you again. Oh my gosh. And Jim, James, so Wednesday, I know you've got the big meditation. What else yeah, do you have? Meditation is Wednesday. Yeah, yeah okay. that's the big thing. Mediumship one is um, open for another week and then that closes. And then the cruise that you and I get down in August. I can't wait. And you've got your big thing in May. May, you've got something too. You're going to Florida in May. I'm going to Florida in May, the Parker Plaza, Fort Lauderdale, and also in Tampa, St. Peter. I'll be doing some workshops. <sighs> People are just loving this, really. And I love that you teach Vedic astrology. So everybody, please go to his site because everybody asked me how, and I, I'm going to send them to you. Yes. And we have created a special ebook called Transforming Your Life Through the Secrets of Vastu. If you want to. Oh, that's right. Okay. How these ancient civilizations used Vastu to support good health. Uh, uh, prosperity and everything is all in that ebook. If you just, uh, I think they're going to share the link or, but if yep. you yep, to the chat room right here. Yep. Perfect. Oh. Perfect. Great. Yep. Gosh. Well, thank well, you thanks, so Michael. much. Really, Michael. What, really Michael. what a pleasure. Gosh, what a pleasure. I'd love to get together uh, again sometime. Uh, yes. Very fascinating what you guys do too. My wife is a channel. That's how we met. We went to a, a channeling class together and channeled for each other. So that's, you yeah. know, have you ever worked at Seaside Center? Um, I've been, but I have not done oh, it. You should do I'll, me, I'll talk to them over there. You should do like a workshop there or something That'd for be them. Fun. Because to do you it. can teach everybody, you know, you should, yeah, definitely do that. And stuff at Solo Yoga and different places. But yeah. Have well, I'll, I'll help you with that because more people should know more about this. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you so All right. much. All right. Thank you, everybody. All right. And good night. And thanks, Renee. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean left. <laughs>